His Morning Crew with Rob, Allison, and Jim. Chris Hogan is a father, speaker, and author of the new book, Everyday Millionaires, How Ordinary People Built Extraordinary Wealth, and How You Can Too. Good morning, Chris. Hi, good morning. You look awfully chipper to, for being a Bama fan. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't want to talk about that. You sure? <laughs> because it was quite the game. Yeah, it, it was. Uh, you know what? Uh, as sad as I was for Alabama, I was very proud of Dabo Sweeney. Uh, he is a good man. I had a chance to meet him several years ago. He runs a class organization. So very excited for Clemson. Yeah, and very sad for Bama. Yes, and yeah. they'll be back. They'll both be back. <laughs> sure they'll be they okay. Will. Yeah, they had great seasons, and uh, the, the, all the uh, fans and affiliates of those universities should both be proud. Well, if you can't tell by Chris's amazing voice, he was a football player in college. So, But he's now focusing on millionaires. You conducted the largest study of millionaires ever. What did you find out? Well, we found out a lot, and the team and I, as we started talking about this, we knew we wanted to go big. Uh, if you remember Thomas Stanley's book from 25 years ago, Millionaire Next Door, that was a fantastic book. It started to reshape the framework of what I thought about millionaires. But I wanted to know, in this day and age, have things changed? What does it look like? So we wanted to go big. So we commissioned a research firm to help us and talk to over 10,000 millionaires from all across the country. And what we were able to find out is that these millionaires are less tr trust fund babies. These people are not people that hit the lottery or got lucky. These were regular, everyday people that had worked hard and consistently over time. Yeah, because when I think of a millionaire, a couple of things I used to think was, okay, they inherited their money, they won it somehow, they get a, like a super huge paycheck, but that's not necessarily the case. No, that's not true at all. And that's one of the six, those are two of the six myths that we ended up busting throughout this research. Uh, a lot of people believe the inheritance factor. And I'm going to be honest with you, growing up in a small town in Kentucky, I believe that as well, that you had to come from a wealthy family in order to have money. But in doing our research, what we found is only 21% of these millionaires received an inheritance. Uh, so it's not about inheriting the money. It's about first generation wealth, people that are building it consistently over time. Okay, so we hear you have a little quiz for us. I'm going to ask the questions. Rob and Jim, you're going to try to guess the answer. Oh, and no. then Chris is going to tell you oh, the no. correct answer, okay? <laughs> okay, so, all right. So question one, the typical millionaire <clears throat> spends how much money per month on restaurants? On re eating out? Yeah. I'm thinking, okay, business people. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say like 1200 bucks. Okay. No, oh, 600 600 Okay, so what's the answer, Chris? These average millionaires were spending less than around $200 a month at restaurants. What? So you both were way too high. I think but, I'm over that. But I was closest. <laughs> Jim was the closest. Oh, my goodness. What percent of well, millionaires? Well, in, in reality, what they're doing is they're very intentional with money. Uh, it's not something that's an accident. And it's not saying that you can't go out and eat uh, and you can't have some fun. But the mindset shifts a little bit. When you work hard for your money, you want to make sure that it's working hard for you. So, again, being intentional, making sure you're telling your money where to go instead of wondering where it went. Okay, so so that may help you with this next question. What percent of millionaires shop with coupons, guys? Oh boy, um, uh, percent? Yeah, eighty what percent. Eighty percent. Okay. I'm gonna say it's pretty high. I'm, uh, I'm going to say 81%. <laughs> Allison, tell them where they are. 93%. Oh, really? Yes. That's pretty yes. high. So 93% are using coupons. All right, last question. Name one of the top three professions of millionaires. Oh, okay. I'm clueless. What do you think, Jim? Uh, top three. Uh, realtor. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Real, I'm not, uh, I was going to say the same thing like Trump or something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I couldn't DJ, tell you. A DJ, say a DJ. <laughs> no, okay, sure, a radio <laughs> DJ. It's actually <laughs> accountant, teacher, and engineer. Really? Yes, yes. And and looking at those professions, engineers uh, be coming in at number one is not a surprise because they're good at planning. Accountants doesn't surprise really that much at number two because they're good at counting money. But teachers coming in at number three was a real eye-opener. But in reality, teachers are used to helping other people learn, and they're also following plans. And so these teachers that are focused and they're paying off their house that might be at 500000 and they're putting money aside in their 403B month in and month out at another 500000 you add those two together and you've got a net worth of a million dollars. So they can become everyday millionaires. So the long story is this. You, it doesn't matter your profession. It doesn't matter about your income. What matters is, is you being intentional with your money and believing that you can do it.
Everyday Millionaires. That's the book. It's Chris Hogan along with us. You interviewed a lot of people, but I'm very curious, and this is going to be tough, but what one story about all the people that you talked to kind of stands out the most to you? Well, I, I think if you're looking at the stories, and the book is full of them, of people that have overcome some really serious things to get to where they are. But I think Thomas's story is the one that really stands out to me. Uh, this was a young man that was raised in a, a family that was dysfunctional. Uh, his, his dad was an alcoholic. Uh, his mom had some mental issues. Uh, so he ended up having to spend time in and out of three or four different foster homes growing up. But despite those challenges, he was still able to stay focused. Uh, he went on to school, uh, went to serve his country in the military, uh, came back, graduated, and went into the education field. So he had a heart for helping people. And this man, uh, focusing over time as a teacher, was able to finish with a net worth of over $2.5 million. So again, I think the thing to take from that is, despite where you come from, well, despite where you were born or where you were raised, it's all a matter of the decisions we get to make as adults for ourselves and what we want to accomplish. Chris Hogan, author. It's absolutely amazing. We have several of these books to give away, too. Yeah, just oh, well, to good. The, yes, hit, head to the His Radio Instagram page, and we will be giving a few away. So just tag a friend there to enter. You can check out our interview with Chris Hogan. It'll be online really soon at hisradio.com, Apple TV, Roku TV, and the His Radio TV app. It's His Morning Crew with Rob, Allison, and Jim. Good morning.